Hello and welcome to a very special Warhammer Wednesday. In this week's video, I will be reviewing Constantin Valdor, the Captain General of the Legio Custodes, the Shield of the Emperor, the first of the 10,000. He is the right hand of the Emperor himself, his most trusted companion and guardian, a watchman of inviolable purpose and unmatched fighting skill. He is a Primarch in all but name, and he is yours for the low, low price of £60. <laughs> I think this has just taken the crown for my most favourite model um, so far in the hobby. And I'm saying that with the Warlord Titan out of earshot right now. Um, I absolutely love this model. It comes in a, a fancy sort of double story Horus Heresy um, character box. Uh, you get the world's uh, best colour um, step by step guide uh, instruction booklet you don't you just get pictures of the pieces which is not very helpful at all <laughs> it would have been nice if they did have an instruction guide um, i'm just making fun of that it's a little bit like a contempt to dreadnought you don't normally get a guide with that uh, you just expected to know how to build it um, just from all the pieces and he does consist of 17 pieces not including the two bases uh, you get two bases in this i think one is a Oh, I want to say a 60 mil. Oh, it might even be 80 mil. And you get the uh, 40 mil base too. Now I will be going through all of his rules uh, in the second half of the video that can be found in the 80 pound book, uh, you know, book seven of the Horus Heresy called Inferno, which has a lot of custodies in there. There's still a group of models that they haven't well, they probably have made, but they haven't released yet, which is the Hiteron Guard. At the moment, I think people are just proxying normal Custodian Guard. I would absolutely jump at the chance of uh, getting hold of um, some Hiteron Guard that Forge World have made, because they're kind of like the inner circle uh, of the Emperor's bodyguard, kind of like the top bodyguards for him. And they probably look really cool around um, Valdor too. But before I go into the rules, let's have a huge breakdown of the model and display some size comparisons as well, because he's quite a big uh, big guy. First of all, before we uh, address those kind of things, um, let's just have a look, little look at a picture of him in the uh, Horus Heresy Inferno book. So this is, let's just sort of zoom out. This is kind of what he looks like in the book. And that's what I was expecting. Um, I think this is a young Valdor, um, maybe before the Crusade uh, or something like that. But um, I think the one that we've got, the model on the right hand side there, is when he's uh, sent off to Tizka to enact the Emperor's word. His word is the Emperor's word, um, essentially. If you Google Valdor too, um, you'll probably see some images of him, um, I say quite young, with kind of like a Mohican um, kind of haircut, with kind of different armor. Not as blinged up armor, I wanna say. It doesn't have the big horned beast, it doesn't have the big raven, or the cloak, uh, or, or anything like that. It's quite a young Valdor, probably just rising through the ranks. So first of all, let's have a look at the model itself. I wanna say, straight away, if you are on the fence, go out and get him. This is 60 pounds well spent. It's double the price of the uh, shield captain, which I will put in the video in, in a moment, but you get so much more. It's like having your own little Primark. Nothing stopping you from using him in the game as a shield captain, nothing at all. So let's have a closer look. Now what I've done with mine, yours doesn't come with magnets. Somebody asked me about the Wardor Titan the other day, like does it come pre-magnetized? Cry, can you just imagine how much it would be if they did pre-magnetize it all? It'd be so much more money, um, but no. It's a hobby. You have to get creative. They don't come pre-painted. Sometimes you have to walk the road less traveled, if that makes sense. And that's what I've done with this model. That's what I did with the Warhammer 40,000 character series, Gabriel Angelos uh, model. I've magnetized the, the base. What I mean by that is, uh, we'll, we'll have a look at the, the detail in a moment, but I put a, you don't have to put this many magnets as well. You don't have to turn the model into a, a shrine to Magneto or something like that, but, They've got a little magnet there and one there, and they uh, directly correspond to the magnets in here. And they will just slot in and, and hold in place. Likewise here, I've got a couple of magnets and a couple of magnets there, and they will slot in place. That's great because you can't physically um, 
glue the model like so and then have these on you can't really have them loose. They wobble about too much and they come off. If you were to glue them, then you're trapping Valdor in his massive base. And we don't really want to do that. So like the Gabriel Angelos model, um, I've magnetized them so I can just take, take these parts off and just have him on his base when he touches down after teleporting or jumping out of an Orion dropship or um, something like that. First of all, let's have a look at the base itself and all the details. So yes, it is a uh, thousand suns, um, dead bodies around. There's Tizka, Tizka iconography. You've got a little, little symbol here, which I've just realized is a huge bit of slippage. Uh, so I'm going to have to tidy that up. Um, that's going to be really, really tricky to get in there. So uh, <laughs> that's my job for the rest of the afternoon, I think. But you've got some uh, destroyed uh, scenery here and a uh, thousand sun mark for uh, armor head there. Some scarabs on the uh, masonry. Got some more Tisca symbols and runes. Um, lots of detail on here. This is where it gets a bit ugly. Um, I filed that down and smoothed that down as best I can. I obviously put some green stuff there as well. And um, when that's sprayed and painted, you're not really going to see it that much. Um, but yeah, this part of the base um, glues into that. Um, and that's pretty much just, just two parts. But yeah, lots of detail. Going to be great for uh, shading and highlighting. This is the other part that just uh, affixes here on the lower part of the base um, again lots of detail of, of, on the rocks and uh, this just has a bit of a piece of uh, fallen masonry too a load of detail there and that will just go there so that's his like uh, scenic base um, pretty cool I do love models that come in the scenic base let's have a look at the model himself now he is very busy but he's the right hand of the Emperor. I highly doubt they're just going to have the Emperor model, which they will make. You can guarantee it. Might not be next year, might be 2020, might be in five years time. Who knows? But you will get a model because in Inferno it says, it specifically says if the Emperor is on the battlefield. So you will get a model to reenact uh, the Ulanor. Uh, wars as well. They'll probably release larger orcs for that or something like that. But anyway, he's bound to have a lot of bling. He's not Stormtrooper number 5852, is he? He he is one of the key characters in the, the Horus Heresy uh, in the whole universe. Like a Primarch, uh, quite a few of the Primarchs have a lot of things going on. This is a guy that's come to Tisca to make a statement. He's very blinged up. He's got the beast claws. He's got a beast head there. I'll do some, uh, I'll zoom, zoom in a fair bit so you can see all the detail. Lots and lots of detail, lots going on. Maybe it's too much, but I think it works. And that's just my opinion. Like all art, very subjective. It looks like he's leapt straight out of uh, a piece of artwork. Uh, in my my view. Yes, he's got some uh, masonry here from Tizka and uh, a broken uh, Mark III armor plate. It is odd that you've got Mark III armor plate so close to a uh, Mark IV um, power armor, but hey, that's that's obviously intentional. I really do like the 3D detailing on the, the knees and the armor in general. You've got a um, armor in general. That was a bit of a pun. Okay. You've got a lion's head here and then a a screaming sort of face there. You've got the claws, you've got the little cherub, if you can see that, completely enhanced there. You've got the cherub, um, you've got this kind of rod of office or, or some kind of scroll, probably saying, you know, hey, you know, ease off on the psychers, you you uh, Tiscan people. Um, then you've got the, the Aquila with the lightning bolts. You've got some cords that you normally get um, in the, the standard custodies. You've got this lovely little Rosarius. You've got some, some emblems there. It looks like a, the head of the eagle there. And then you've got a skull. Um, there's a fair bit of dust on him because I'm yet to sort of clean him up a bit more. If you look at his face, it looks quite gaunt. Uh, he's got a lot of cabling and tubes um, going into like uh, his temples and then he's got this thing reaching out of his head. Um, you've got this raven or, or eagle kind of uh, appendage on, on his uh, right shoulder pauldron. Uh, somebody asked me um, on Instagram if uh, the shoulder pauldrons um, would go with the the other shield captain. No, I don't. I don't think you could make that work. Um, to be fair, um, I don't think you could put these uh, these big shoulder pauldrons. They are plug and socket. Yes, you could take the the plugs off, but I just think the proportions for the arms just. I don't think they'd work with the new new shield captain. It's got this lovely kind of iron halo kind of. Um, 
backdrop uh, really sort of frames his head there. Um, yeah, even the big important guys don't wear helmets. Look at Robute Gilliman. Look at look at the Emperor. Um, you know uh, they they really don't have a need for helmets because. They've got mind bullets, let's face it. Um, well, obviously, I don't think Valdor's a psycho, but still. And then let's have a look at the uh, Apollonian spear. Um, lovely, lovely spear. I thought it would be a bit bigger um, than I was expecting. It's only a little bit bigger than uh, normal Guardian spears, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, and it's not as ornate as, as I would have wanted. Um, yes, the the cutting edge length is, is very long, easily the longest cutting edge length. Um, and Forgeworld, if you look at the um, the model on their website, have done an absolutely stunning job again with the, the paint job, um, just to get that look at the, and the feel of like the, the weapons power of the molecular uh, severance um, kind of ability. And the Paragon kind of bolter um, looks pretty immense too. Very small kind of magazine entry port though, I have to say. Um, I feel that that's quite big sort of wasted space. But anyway, uh, this is the, the beast in question then. Um, some don't really like it. Uh, I mean, it is just a beast head. Um, you've got some claws and stuff there. It's not like it's a, a big dead animal sort of you know, on the shoulder, it is just the head and a bit of the mane. Uh, it's not attached to this um, kind of uh, these these claws here. It's uh, its own separate thing. I do like uh, all of the detail on there, specifically the ears of the beast, the horns, the teeth. I think it really works. Um, and I really like the uh, cape. Lots of detail, lots of creases. Uh, it's going to be really quite straightforward to, to paint that uh, Aquila with the lightning gold and uh, these little uh, pieces here on the cape. And I like the long scrolls that are coming uh, from the, the eagle as well, or the raven, whatever. Um, I do find it odd still that the uh, shoulder pauldron is sort of reversed. I think I've said this in, in other videos before, like the pre-order video, that uh, typically the custodies have uh, this shoulder pauldron, the one with the gaps on the, the left uh, arm. Um, but for some reason, uh, Valdor has, has swapped them round. It's probably just a detail that I would I would notice, but there you go. Um, so yeah, absolutely stunning model. I know I've talked ages about him, but I definitely think that um, that's justified. Uh, he is expensive, he's 60 pounds, but I was expecting kind of 65, 70 pounds and Forgeworld probably could have got away with that too. I don't want to give them ideas, but like I said at the very start, you are getting a good deal with this model. Um, for its price point and you shouldn't hesitate with the amount of detail on it. Um, so let's do a few size comparisons then. So firstly on his very large base, um, his scenic base, I don't know whether you'd want to use that in game, um, I think you could just use your, you know, his normal smaller base, but next to a um, Achilles uh, Dreadnought, a Contempt of Dreadnought, you can see that uh, Valdor is taller. The spear is taller by a considerable amount there um, to the Dreadnought and the shield probably just, just about covers him. Um, yeah, head-wise, they're sort of on par. So that gives you an idea of just how big Valdor is um, on his scenic base. Very decent-sized model, and it sort of makes sense, considering you can get a uh, Contemptor, which has does have a lot of detail, but nowhere near as much detail as Valdor, um, for a similar kind of price. Um, obviously, Contemptor, uh, just get your normal standard um, one pence, uh, you know, cheap plastic base. Um, you don't get anywhere near the level of detail or the scenic base that comes with Valdor. Um, and you don't get uh, as much detail on the model itself too. Next to a normal uh, Custodes, he's gonna absolutely dwarf everyone on that uh, massive scenic base. And I've also got the Shield Captain too, although the Shield Captain is similar size to the uh, normal Custodes. So yes, he is going to be a centerpiece to the Custodes army, especially on that uh, amazing base. Just comparing him to a uh, normal Space Marine and a uh, Primaris. There we go. So we've got, uh, yeah, he's definitely going to uh, dwarf uh, normal sort of Space Marines too. So. Standing out, head and shoulders above a lot of things. He's not as tall as the um, Telemon Dreadnought with its uh, spiculous bolt launcher. If you've just got normal contemptors or jet bikes even, uh, a big, big centerpiece for, uh, for the army. Obviously, he's gonna be dwarfed by like an Orion dropship if you've got something like that. So now, how does he compare off of his big, um, big, big base? 
So let's uh, just put him there. Now, this is where it gets interesting because he is still taller than the um, Contemptor Dreadnought. However, you know, he is still on a on a big base there. It quite adds uh, quite a lot of height to him. But infantry model-wise, he's still taller than your, your normal um, shield captain, your normal custodian guard, and definitely taller than a... Uh, Primaris and your normal Space Marine. More than heads and shoulders above uh, a lot of your Custodian Guard force um, just on that base. You can easily spot him on the battlefield and I think he's a fantastic shield captain if you wanted to use him as a shield captain of course. So I hope all those size comparisons have helped. Okay so this is my part of the review where I will talk to you about all of his rules. His 30k rules or Horus Heresy rules, basically it's 7th edition um, that can be found in Book 7 Inferno uh, in the talons of the emperor section he's an hq choice uh, he's a character he's actually a few pages uh, past uh, the legio custodes shield captain which we finally got a model um, from 4142 so he will cost you 275 points that's that's it a little bit more than a land raider then in in old money um his stat line then my word his weapon skill is seven ballistic skill five strength five toughness five five wounds initiative six five attacks leadership 10 and a save of two plus the only difference between him and a uh, normal shield captain is that his weapon skill is seven uh, and he has one extra wound which is five obviously he's still got the same number of attacks same leadership same save same toughness strength uh, and ballistic skill and so on his war gear the apollonian spear an Iron Halo, a Misericordia, Plasma and Crack Grenades, a Ray Shrike, Digital Lasers and Custodian Armour. So his Custodian Armour will give him his 2 plus normal save and his Iron Halo will give him 4 plus and vulnerable. It's quite decent. Special rules though. Preternatural Skill, the Sodality, Fearless, Inviolable, Psyche, Bulky, Crusader, Counter-Attack, Precision Strikes, Precision Shots, Eternal Warrior, Independent Character, and Warlord trait. If Valdor is the army's Warlord, then he has the Shadow of the Throne trait rather than rolling randomly. Now, his war gear then, the Apollonian Spear. It's believed to be handcrafted by the Emperor himself and once wielded by his own hand in battle as far back as the Unification Wars in which he rose to power on terror. It'd be great to get a, uh, a pre-Crusade uh, Emperor model with this same spear. They've already got the spear, let's face it. And it was given to Valdor upon his ascension to the mantle of Chief Custodian, and it served no other since. It incorporates both the power blade and an inbuilt bolter weapon, but their potency far exceeds those of other custodies. It's got two stat lines. Basically, it normally adds plus one strength, so that's strength six, um, but if he charges, then it adds two strength, so it's strength seven. Its AP is two, it's melee, lightning blows, molecular severance, and specialist weapon. And then the bolter aspect of the weapon is hypervelocity bolter, it's a range 18 inch uh, weapon, it's strength five, AP two, assault two, and concussive. So, lightning blows for the Apollonian spear. Every roll of a six to hit with a weapon generates another attack with the same weapon at the same initiative step. However, the extra attacks don't themselves generate further attacks. That's pretty good. You've got five attacks. You're getting sixes. Just gives you some more attacks. Pretty decent. However, molecular severance. Any wound roll of a four plus. So you've got a 50-50 chance when you wound an enemy with the power blade part of the weapon. Um, it inflicts instant death. Or in the case of a vehicle, causes a penetrating hit regardless of the target's armor value. So any wound roll out of your five attacks, 50-50 chance of penetrating hits or instant death. That is insane. It would be nice if it was three plus. <laughs> in addition, any successful invulnerable saves made against wounds from the weapon must be re-rolled. That's incredible. So someone's got another iron halo or whatever and they save it on their four plus they have to re-roll that oh they've got a three instant death warlord trait the shadow of the throne valdor carries with him the authority of terror itself and there's little by way of resource or technology that is available to the vast imperium of humanity that he cannot requisition or command if he wills it if he's your warlord you can re-roll attempts to siege the initiative in missions where this is a factor and any legio custodes unit including himself may be given teleportation transponders at no extra cost 
that's amazing. You take him, you get in your teleportation transponders. Everybody gets free teleportation and you just appear out of nowhere on the battlefield with him. And it's nice that you can also uh, re-roll to CC objective too. So that's pretty cool. So a very, very strong character. Yes, he hasn't got uh, the ability to call in like a, an orbital bombardment or anything like a, a Space Marine Forge Commander or even like a Stormbird. And I would have liked something in the way of that rather than free teleportation transponders. Seems a bit cheap for someone who's like the right hand man of the Emperor uh, of mankind. Something beastie range wise that's what i'd like to see and um, where he can call in you know maybe he, if he could call in a squad of here on guard or just something so something extra range just to give him that much more of an edge because at the moment he's just got a a bolter um it's an ap2 bolter but still um i'd like him to have something that kind of balances out his uh his molecular severance uh, with the apollonian spear um but still the biggest, baddest custodies uh, on the tabletop, in the law. Uh, Trajan Valaris is very good with his axe and his um, shackle, but this guy is, is just another thing altogether, carrying around the Emperor's spear. And in reality, he's only 85 points more than a, a normal shield captain. So to get an extra wound, get a way better weapon skill, to get the Apollonian spear, and to give everybody teleportation transponders, um, I think that's worth it for 85 points more points i really do teleportation transponders are normally five points each anyway so if you've got i'll go for the lowest number i'll go for squads of three and um, that's 15 points per unit so if you've got 14 custodies uh or more in your army then it's worth it just to get those uh, teleportation transponders also if you've got a legio custodies army and you're facing up against someone who wants to bring along their primark um then I think he's going to do pretty well too. He's still going to have difficulties with the purely melee focused Primarchs um, such as Angron, uh, especially if Angron has um, you know, built up his uh, butcher's nails and stuff. As a collector, it's great to have him in my collection as the leader of my uh, Custodes army. But I want to hear what you guys think. What do you think of the model? Uh, what do you think of the rules? Have you already painted him? Have you already played a game with him? Please do put it in the comments below as always. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.